Hello, welcome to another English Sparkling with Tweedy video. <laughs> Sorry, it's my back garden again. It's a rather damp day as well. It's been raining on and off all day. This is a wine that I have actually featured before. It's Bluebell Hindleap. Where does the Bluebell even come into this? I'm always quite confused about the relationship between the words Bluebell and Hindleap. I think it's called Bluebell Vineyard and they're, perhaps their series of sparkling wines they call Hindleap for some reason. It's the Blanc de Blanc, so it's 100% Chardonnay and it's from the 2015 vintage. I did do some brief tasting notes on this before, but it was very windy. I think I was sat on top of some hill or other. You could barely hear what I was saying. It ended up a very short video and I feel like I didn't really do it justice. So I happened to pick some of this up again. Surprisingly the same vintage. They're still selling the 2015 of this. This was from John Lewis Food Hall, Oxford Street, Central London. You can buy this from, I think, Waitrose Cellar as well. I'm not sure if it would exactly be the same vintage, but it may well be. It's had 52 months on the lees. So that is, what, four years and a third. It's a decent time on the lees. Disgorged, start of 2021. So it's had another, now, three and a half years aging under cork. So I'm expecting this to be sort of quite venerable and interesting. I have visited this vineyard at the end of my viticulture course. We came here as a sort of celebration or something. It was interesting to see a real commercial vineyard. We did most of the training in Plumpton College's vineyard that is mostly used for teaching in, although well, they do make some wines as well. The thing I particularly remember about this vineyard, or this, uh, this winery, in fact, they tend to do quite a cool fermentation. And the winemaker there, whose name I have forgotten, sorry, said that that helped to preserve some of the fruit character. So I think when we talk about cool fermentations, that's a particular strain of yeast that will ferment reasonably at cooler temperatures. Normally you have to you know, maintain a certain temperature range to, uh, with any kind of beer, wine, whatever, to make sure fermentation happens. I found Bluebells, Blanc de Blancs especially, have always gone a little bit above and beyond the usual apple and lemon characters that you'd expect for a Chardonnay in England. There are these sort of tantalizing kind of slightly tropical notes. I'm getting that again here. It's subtle, but there's sort of hints of maybe something like pineapple in there, in amongst the usual orchard fruit and citrus. I am also getting a little bit of struck match here, which is unfortunate. Never like it when I find that. The official tasting notes on the back say lime and citrus blossom on the nose, and then gooseberry, elderflower, and peach on the palate. So they're already not really fruit notes I would expect from a purely Chardonnay wine. But yeah, I feel like I get something a little bit beyond citrus and maybe slightly pineapple-y. What do we say about the colour? It's quite a yellowy version of gold there, isn't it? And there are maybe sort of subtle edges of that kind of buttery. The thing that Chardonnay does after a lot of aging, it tends to go a little bit more sort of rich and buttery, a bit more luxurious. I'm getting some of that here on the nose as well. Something sort of slightly bready, <laughs> some bread and butter, bread and butter and pineapple jam, a weird combination. On the palate, met initially by decent searing acidity, a particular kind of effervescence that reminds me of sort of sherbet almost, a bit like um, sherbet, it's a powdery sort of effervescence in a way. And I think fruit wise, yes, I would agree with what they said about the gooseberry there. Again, I feel like it does also go very slightly tropical. A little bit of, I don't know, passion fruit, pineapple, mango, the usual tropical fruit suspects, but also a decent amount of citrus. Relatively dry, certainly isn't cloyingly sweet at all, or that talk of tropical fruit. It's pretty zingy, pretty well balanced, pretty dry really. I don't know what the dosage is, does it say on the back here, but I would guess that's relatively low. Maybe mineral notes in amongst that, but that could just be that sort of sensation of that sherbet zing. So yeah, I think that's nice. Um, dry sherbet, tropical fruit, <laughs> hint of butter. I think there's quite a lot going on there. The, um, there's still a bit of that struck match. Hopefully that will, that will burn off with more, um, more swilling and nosing and swigging. That aside, I think that's um, it's pretty nice, actually. It's uh, something a bit different from other Blanc de Blancs, other Chardonnay dominant or 100% Chardonnay English sparklings. I think you can see some evidence of that, the, the, the merit of that cooler fermentation, the way you get that kind of, I think that's what has brought out these sort of slightly tropical fruits here. We've gone a bit beyond, like I said, the usual citrus and orchard fruit type notes you get with Chardonnay in England. And I think that's pretty interesting. Cheers.